over. Jesus Christ. Le Mike? Hello? Glory be to the Father. Are we to start? Be to the Son. Glory be to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now ever shall be world without end. Amen. Let's bow our head for short prayer. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael. Our Father and our God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Salvation. Father, we appreciate you. You created us in the beginning as a king. And you make a very beautiful, perfect garden to live in. But when we committed sin, you drove us out of that garden because you cannot see sin. And then when we commit a sin, as you have warned us before, do not go into the fruit in that means of the garden. You will surely die. Death is a reward for the sinner. You hate have everlasting life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Today, <clears throat> we want to discuss concerning life and death. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 and 16, I read, See, I said before thee this day, life and good, and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his way, and to keep his commandments, and his status, and his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply. That is the intention of God, the love of God. When we are calling God the God of love, what is the meaning of that? Because he wants us to live. 
After we committed sin in the Garden of Eden, he drove us out of that garden. But remember, he called Moses. Come and lead my people out of the land of slavery to the promised land. I will be with you. And he did. After that, big Joshua, big Samuel, big Saul, big David, a faithful priest. Now, upon all, he pick our prophets. What is searching for? He wants somebody to stand firm between him and the people, human being, that he created for his glory to be a king forever with him. No. In Ezekiel chapter 30, chapter 22, verse 30, and he said, I saw them on them. Somebody that will be upright to stand in the gap that I will not destroy them. But I don't see. And that's the reason why a lot of the children of Israel were perished. He handed them over to Nebuchadnezzar to punish them for 70 years because of disobedience. Now, at the end of it, without wasting our time, in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, I read, And I sought for a man among them, that should make up the, the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy them, but I find none. Our God is very good. He has been arranging many, 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 Moses, Joshua, and so on. Even after Moses, you can see how the children of Israel behave against God. Look at the time of Isaiah. I say, hey, you these people. I'm sorry for you. But thank God. Isaiah is one of the prophets that prophesy concerning the coming of Jesus Christ. He prophesied a lot. One of, one of them is chapter, Isaiah chapter 9. I would love to read one before I quickly go into the proper. Isaiah chapter 9, from verse 6. And I read. I saw in many places that I will not mention now because this topic has chapter part two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. The laws. But unto us a child is born. I'm reading from verse six, chapter nine. Unto all a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. You can see, Jesus carry the image of God. Jesus is God. God is in him. He covered that body. That is why he said to Philip, don't you see me? When you see me, you see God. Mighty God. 
the everlasting father. You can see. The prince of peace. And that's why in John 10.10, 10, he says something that is very important for us to take note of it. Clearly, it's a clear statement. In John 10.10, 10, there's a lot of happening. You remember when the Pharisees, Sadducees, and many elders in the land of Jerusalem, in the Israelite. They encounter him concerning him, the death of Lazarus. And he told his disciple, Lazarus, our, our friend, slept. They don't want biblical language or Christian language concerning death is different. We don't use death for Christian. No. The Bible did not use death for Christian. Sleep. Because they know they will rise again. Hallelujah. In that John 10, 10, before I move on, look at what Jesus said. Fairly, fairly, I said unto you, When Jesus mentioned fairly, it means a lot. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Who is referring to? You may give that fast main interpretation. That's your own cup of tea. But it's, it's referring to the person that steals our life. And he gave us death in the Garden of Eden. That's why he come. I am come that they might have life. What is the meaning of life? That is the first intention of God. He created us not to die in the Garden of Eden. Because we committed sin, that's why death, he, he drove us out. He cannot deal with their person. You may be arrogant to yourself, you have money, you have breathing all over the place. You are a dead person if you don't have life, you don't have the Holy Spirit. And when you die, you die, that's all. But this all brings life. Hallelujah. And that they might have it more abundantly. What I'm trying to say here is a Christian that you receive the power of God is no more dead. It's living in resurrection ground. You are, you are living on the expectation of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And you will not die. John chapter 5, verse 24. Look at what Jesus said there. Let me read. Fairly, fairly, I said unto you, he that believe, he heard my word, and believed on him that sent me, heart everlasting life. You see, when you enter into the word of God and you are practicing it, what is the meaning of that? It means you hate sin. You don't commit sin anymore. It's possible. If you said it's not possible, it's not your fault. It's because you don't know. Belief who has sent me heart everlasting life. And he shall not come into condemnation. Many people may not know you, but it's within you are condemnation. But he passed from death to life. That's what Jesus said. You believe in me in my word, and you believe 
you, you will serve me, you will cross over. You will not die. Like, look at Jesus Christ. He died and he rose up on the third day. That's it. Okay. We are discussing about Lazarus now. That is a good example. In chapter 11, John, chapter 11. When Jesus is talking about Lazarus here, look at the statement there. Here. I'm reading from verse 14 now. John 11, 14. Yeah. Sorry, from first time. Are there 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he's stumbling not. Because he said the light of the world. But if a man walk in, in night, he's stumbling because there is no light for him. This thing said he, and after he said it, our friend Lazarus slept. But I go that we may wake him out of sleep. Then said the disciple, Lord, if you sleep, you should have been done with. You know, they don't understand the biblical language there. Jesus spoke as a man from heaven, sleep. But disciples, they said, no, 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 daddy, he's not, he's dead. <laughs> okay, thank God for that. You said it. You said it. Eve is dead. But they thought that he has spoken of, talking of rest in, in sleep. They said, Jesus, on to them clearly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. What I'm trying to say there is that the language of sleep or death, many people just don't understand. They will emphasize like they know everything. And that's why there's a lot of people, they call themselves born again, they easily commit as even their tongue, speaking nonsense, rubbish. Even some people when they are praying, they will call their enemy. How do you get that? The Christian should not cause, you will not abuse. Some people will fight openly. Ah, no, 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 I, I'm not for that. I don't because I, uh, I'm a Christian, I will not be, no, 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 I don't. Uh, no, it is because you are not. When you get to rest, you receive the power of Jesus Christ, you will understand that you are no more a dead person, you are a living person. Look at what Jesus said in John in heaven that we are reading now. In verse 23, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. <laughs> Look at the, the reply. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. We are talking of the present, and he's talking of the last day. That is how many people, when you, they will postpone their blessing to tomorrow. The, the blessing they're supposed to claim now. I could remember briefly, around 1978, somebody came to sell it. And the prophet said, hey man, 
in three months time you will buy a brand new car. And he said, please tell that man I am searching for work. You don't still understand. The way the Lord did his thing. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. You can just imagine. He confirmed it to Martha. What are you talking about? I'm talking of the prison you are talking about the last day. Listen. He that believed me, though he died, yet shall be live. That is trans transformation from death to life. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Look at that. Shall never. We that we are in the present believing in Jesus Christ. I've been telling many people in Nigeria, I don't want to die. I want to fly off the day that I will leave this world. I don't, <laughs> I'm still a little. You will just see I disappear. Because I believe that word. Shall never die. Look at what happened. In Mark chapter 9 verse 1. Look at that statement. Concerning many people. Mark chapter 9. Let me read. First one. And he said unto them, Fairly I said unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, we shall not see taste of death. I don't know how many there on that day. They will not taste death. They will not die. Hallelujah. I love that place. Till they are seeing the kingdom of God come with power. And, that's, and that is what happened to Simone in Luke chapter 2. He said, the Lord has told him that he will not see death before he see life. That Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In case of this, I want to limit my lecture on Jesus Christ today. And later on, we will continue in the confirmation of those who believe in Jesus Christ, the apostles, especially Paul Apostle, that they even open a heart to the kingdom. When he's talking, he's talking about kingdom. He doesn't talk about five senses. Because some people still there today, some preacher, some evangelist, some shepherd, some daughter of divinity, they don't understand. Okay, look at what the Bible says. In First John chapter 1, oh sorry, First Timothy. Look at what the Bible says. Paul is talking there. First Timothy chapter one. <clears throat> I think from verse three. I will read. Yeah. Now I'm reading. As I besought thee to abide when I went into Macedonia, that thou might charge some that they may teach no other doctrine. Some people want to be a teacher, <laughs> and they were teaching wrongly. Neither give it to Fibu and Medley genealogy which minister questions rather than godly a divine, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of commandment is, 
charity. Now, the end of commandment is charity out of a pure heart and a good conscience and of faith, of faith. From which from having sweet half turn aside into faint jangling. Desiring to be a teacher of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they confirm. They will, they will speak with boldness, with confidence, and they don't understand what they are talking about. When you see some people are speaking, you will think he's speaking the truth. No. They don't understand it. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this that the law is not, for, is not made for a righteous person, a righteous man. When you are committing against law, you are a sinner. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for murderers of murders, for manslayer, for warmongers, for them that divine themselves with mankind, for immense stealers, for liars, for paid person, and if there's any other thing that is contrary to the sand doctrine. Think about it. Look at what is happening in the whole world today. They were committing sin to themselves that they will lead to death. When you notice somebody that is committing sin at will, we don't need to argue with that. Speaking, he may be a speaker of the word, he may be a teacher, he may be an evangelist, he may be a shepherd, but when he's speaking contrary to the pure doctrine, the, the, the pure doctrine that we are talking about is not far fetch. It's, it is not how you talk, but how you do. In fact, at times, it's better to do than to begin to speak out of it. Now, the point is that this house come to this world as live when he's talking to Nicodemus. In John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. It's a clear statement. Let me read it. John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. As the Moses lifted up serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The intention of God, the reason why he sent Jesus to this world, is to transform everyone through the power of the Holy Spirit to become alive. First, you will be transformed from a sinner to be a saint, and you will be struggling in studying the Word of God to maintain it. You don't go back again. Anything that you, you go back to sin again, that's your own cup of tea. Verse 16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, we are going to church. Uh, I am a pastor. Uh, the purpose, the reason the Lord gave his only begotten son to anybody is to be alive. And that's why 
Jesus came to this world, he became flesh because of us. So that we can be able to speak with him and speak with us. And he came and he speak to many thousands of people, if not millions of people, and he picked disciples. They were walking with him, hitting with him to know that this is life. And he showed us a good example to follow. And we are very lucky. We have all right up here to study on daily basis. That the only reason is not to build church. To build church is good. I love it. So that you will arrange people there. The purpose is not to take anointment and become what, whatever you call yourself. Doctor, reverend. And that's the point. You cannot use to deceive anybody. Even if you are brother or sister, it's all right. You cannot because of heavy tide to go to heaven. But the reason is that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. He will not taste death. Everlasting means life eternity. And that is, and God has that in mind. In the beginning, when people fall away, he has it in mind. He knows that that is what is going to happen. It's a master plan of God. But he used Jesus Christ to come and set us free, to redeem us, and to give us all the doctrine that we be study and teach many people about it. Whatever we may, the way we take it, either in the bush, either in the feed, either in the house, that's the most important thing. I am very happy when I'm very young. If anybody is telling me, leave me in the audience, I may not believe. I think, I think then if anybody go to church, he's a man of God. Going to church doesn't mean you are a man of God. There's a lot of new signs going to church, clapping their hand. They don't know the word of God. I'm sorry. And they are with titles. But for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. The, the, what He loved to do is not you to perish. He doesn't want to perish. The Father doesn't want anybody to die in sin. When you die, you go to hell. You have to believe in Jesus Christ and receive life. Okay. Let me show you something. In Noah chapter 6, look at the statement there. Romans chapter 6, let me read. From chapter 6, I will not like to waste your time, I will just touch it. Yeah, Romans chapter 6. Let us start from verse 14. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under the grace. Some people said Luli, Luli, which is grace. And they were committing any blunder sin. Ah, Uri of any. It's Luli, Luli. When you receive that power called Luli, as Ashofa did, as Paul Apostle did, as for many, you see no more. The meaning of Luli is that, the grace is that it will turn you from destruction to life. That's the meaning. Luli or grace is not for you to continue in sin. That first one of it will prove it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in saying that grace may be may abound? God forbid. Tell the people the truth. When you come to the area of truth, if you say you have grace and you are committing sin, 
the spirit of God will not abandon you and you later end, end up somewhere else. In that verse 14, for since I not have dominion over you, for since I have not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Well then, shall we sing? Because we are not under the law, but under the grace, God forbid. How can you tell me that you have the grace of God in you, Holy Spirit in you, and you love all atrocity against the government, against the community, against your family? Hallelujah. Now, look at verse 17. Now, verse 16. Know you not that whom you yourself servant to obey, is servant ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death. That is very clean. That is why repentance is very important to preach. And that's the only two things Jesus emphasized. Jesus said, in, in Luke chapter 24, verse 46, Jesus will die accordingly, as it is written, and he will raise up. And the, they will preach repentance and the remission of sin, start from Jerusalem. The only important thing is to go into repentance, and all the sin that you have committed before is wiped out. But after you receive the grace of God, and you think you can continue in sin, I'm sorry for you. Or obedience into righteousness. You know, seek ye fed the kingdom of God and its righteousness. The rest shall be added. All the all the Lord promised that you will add it is what the people are running about today. I'm sorry. What a man to do. What, what are you want to pay to exchange your soul? You gain the award, you lost your soul. It's very easy to say, but that's what the, the people are running after. But God be thanked that ye were the servant of sin before, but you have obey from the earth the form of the doctrine which was delivered to you through the word of God because the faith is coming by hearing the word of God when you love the word of God all the time you cannot tell me that it's enough it's not enough even if you read the word of God for 100 years they are still in it for you to come about by reading and reading and meditating on it, you will increase and you will begin to see evil. That's the most important thing. They will see, they will show, they will give you power to see evil. How can you not see what, where you are going? It was. And that is what happened to Paul Apostle on his way to Damascus. The light came from heaven, and he said, "Is greater than the light of moon." I mean, sun. Hallelujah. In case of this, let us go to the last verse of John chapter. I mean, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I believe we shall continue next time. But there is a difference between life and death. And God as I arrange the gift 
gift of ethnal life. You receive it? Thank God. But if you are a sinner, remember that the meaning of death is suffering, pain, affliction, poverty, and so on. But ethnal gift is blessing, enjoyment, gladness, happiness, and peace. May the Lord bless. Thank you.
Father Lord, we just want to thank you. We know that you will descend your spirit to give us revelation, enlightenment about your word. We thank you for you continue to be our God and will continue to be your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the topic I have, I want to share this, this evening is having to wait on the Lord in prayer. This is because many of us in the Christian faith and also outside Christendom, there are times we have problems that are varied and individualized. And we have prayed, we have fasted, given offering, and the heavens are still silent on those very, very thorny issues that give us sleepless nights. We cry unto the Lord. But the point is that the prerogative to answer to our prayers essentially belong to the Lord. And you want to know how not in charge you are when you have to deal with the Lord or wait on the Lord. There are many instances in the Holy Scriptures where the people of God had to wait on the Lord. But the beauty of it is that God does not forget those prayers. God manifests supernaturally. It could be sudden. There are times God is instant in answering prayers, but sometimes he is procedural so that the issues of our life will, uh, uh, will align with the blueprint he has for, for us. The ways of God are mysterious, and we are human beings. The whole earth is his footstool, and we may not be able to understand the things that he is doing. But the word of God is our foundation, and we stand solidly, immovable, on the integrity of the word of God, especially in Psalm 50, verse 3, where the Lord said, I will come, I will listen, and I will not be silent. The implication of this is that when you are crying, just like Psalm, Psalm 3, he hears all our cry from his holy hills. He does not forget those prayers. But remember, he has the destiny clock. He has the blueprint. He has the master plan. And in case some of the things you are asking for to be done is completely out of the master plan of the divine master plan for your life, if the Lord grants it, then you are in trouble. You may just enjoy it for a day or two, but the future remains bleak. Another uh, scripture is Isaiah 64, verse 4, where the Lord says that he acts upon the requests of those that are waiting on the Lord. Also, before I go uh, into the uh, core of this, uh, of this message, is the fact that, believe it or not, some of the things we have, we are, have trials and you know, yeah, there are tribulations, but they are trials. Remember, uh, the patriarch Abraham went through trials. The men of old went through trials. The women of old, yeah, they all went through trials. So there was nowhere in the Holy Scriptures where we are promised that our faith will not be tried. But I want to believe that as many people are listening to me, you will come to understand that exercising your faith, enormous faith, with the grace of God in moments of trial and tribulations will get you those answers from the Lord. Because the Bible says that we should continue to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing, non-stop. Prayer is labor. And that's why the Holy Scripture says, Zion travailed, but Zion brought forth. 
I want to tell you that when in the midnight hours you are agonizing in prayer, and your tears are like the tears of our Lord Jesus when he was to face the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, I want to tell you that there shall be a bringing forth, just as a woman in labor brings forth the new bundle of joy. And then you will have the ability to laugh and to know the many dimensions of God. And I also want to thank you, take you into the many dimensions of being thankful to God. Even while we are going through some of the things we are going through, the gift of life is a great miracle. Food on our table, great miracle. That we are not in hospital, great miracle. Or we were hospitalized, uh, but we came out of the hospital. And when, during the moment of wait, if you observe thoroughly, the Lord is putting certain things together. He is doing a few other miracles in, in, in your life because he is the behind the scene God. Even when you, think, when you don't feel his presence, he says he's listening from his holy hills. And that's Psalm 3 verse 4. And also be, uh, uh, proceeding on this uh, message, I want to let you know that sometimes when you are in pain and God does not show up, at that particular time. Remember Christ was on the cross in the greatest human pain. But God did not show up for the Lord Jesus Christ when he was hanging on the cross, when he was on Golgotha Hills. But the Lord showed up in, in the grave and resurrected him with a power that beats the laws of gravity. That is the greatest story in, of mankind till today. So I want to tell you, about that God, the many dimensions of God. He's Jehovah Rohi, he's Jehovah Rapha, he's Jehovah Mekadiskum, he's Jehovah Shama, he's Jehovah Sharon, he's Jehovah Nisi, he's Jehovah El Shaddai. He is God all by himself, sits on the circle of the, with the whole earth as his footstool. So it is good to engage our Lord in moments of travail. But I want to, tell you that there is a one day of visitation and the Lord will turn those hopeless situations around. Jabez cried unto the Lord about his paternity, about his ancestral history that has put him in so ridicule. But the Lord heard him from his holy hills and turned around uh, the, the afflictions of Jabez. And there are lots of uh, Paul and Silas who are in, in chains to be murdered, to be killed in the prison. But the Lord showed up at some point. Yes, and the chains broke and they became, uh, it was freedom to the captives. So are you in captivity? Are you going through serious family lineage issues, ancestral issues? Here's Jehovah Makadiskum that even penetrates into your bloodline to sanitize your bloodline. And give you and rewrite your story and give you a new family story, a new family history. Only if you will be patient. Obededom, for instance, was one, was one of the poor persons of his time. But then there was the visitation of the Lord, the ark, and that transform re, that was the rewriting of the history of Obededom. And it doesn't matter. The valley, how deep the valley you are in, and your and members of family, friends, teachers, you know, the society have abandoned you. It doesn't matter. The Lord may just be opening up a new chap, new chapters in your life. It, and the Lord is, it, you cannot limit the Lord what He can do. In moments when you think it's all over, just as the Israelites got to the Red Sea, it was over. But then they did not lose hope, and suddenly there was the pattern of the Red Sea. Not just that, but, but, but the walls of the sea collapsed and swallowed up their enemies. The Lord, his Jehovah Rapha, comes with healing in his wings. Yes. And to annul and cancel even the doctor's bad reports that we, some, that we receive sometimes. Whose reports do you believe? We shall continue to believe the report of the Lord. 
sometimes it's easier to, you know, to say have faith. Sometimes it's easier to say keep praying. But I, I want to let you know that God is enormous. The challenges are his. And as we continue to remain faithful to the biblical injunction to pray without ceasing, he will come to rescue us. He will open the blind eyes. He will break open the shut doors. He will break down the prison walls. Because let me tell you, some people are just walking physically. It's not just the physical prison that we have in this world. We also have people in spiritual prison. Prison uh, by, uh, by, 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 by dangerous spirits, satanic forces, satanic powers, generational issues keeping them bound, sealing off the, the ceiling, giving them a glass ceiling. They can't penetrate. They can't get a job. They can't get married. They can't get, you know, a lot of things. But the Lord comes to break down the bars of iron and pull us out of this. Sometimes they, it's marine prisons. Sometimes, uh, they, they, you know, people have been hidden in a lot of properties, certificates, yeah, wealth, glory, have been hidden in, in, in aquatic warehouses. But the Lord can go into those, those secret places under the grave, yes, to do what he wants to do. He is the God that can go to the deepest recesses of our lives and turn things around. And one day, just like I earlier said, you will have a cause, you will have cause to rejoice. Because the Bible also says in the book of Psalm 30 that he turns the willing, your willing, your stress, your travail to a joyful dance. And that takes me just touching on the issue of dance. When you have prayed, fasted, given your offering, Please, can you try a little bit of dancing, not just in the church during praise and worship, but in the midnight hours when you cannot sleep, you stand up and give the Lord the, the dance, the kind of dance that David gave unto the Lord, a, a, a dance of careless abandon. Because as you're dancing, the Lord knows the burdens of your heart. He decodes the dance steps. He sees it all. He's glorified in that physical action, but it's a very potent spiritual action. I, I don't care what situation it is. Your life is dry. You are lonely, alone. No, you know, the world, it's like the world is coming against you. But the Bible says that dry bones shall live again. So whatever is dry, your reproductive organs, uh, whatever, your, your bank accounts, dry bones shall live again. And that brings me into uh, prophesying into your situation. Yes, speaking life to situation. Because prophecy is life. Being prophetic, establishing even what you think is humanly impossible. But remember the biblical injunction that with God, all things are possible. So whatever the situation is, in the valley, in the pit, but remember the promotion that the Lord gave to Joseph, even in a strange land. Which means, regardless of where you are, the Lord will, can meet you wherever you are and elevate you, promote you, decorate you, and give you exactly the answers to those prayers. And the Lord is also has said in the Holy Scriptures that he wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul is prospering. So that is his will. That is his mandate. And may it overflow into our careers and our destinies. And may our lives begin to align with his will as we, we, we move into the realm of the table that the Lord has set before us in the book of Psalm 23. And it's assorted. The Lord sometimes comes with packages and does miracles that will make us speechless. May we begin to experience those, those miracles that make us speechless so that we begin to understand the different dimensions of God and know God even on a more personal 
on a more personal basis. So rounding up on this topic is the fact that we must have a devotional frame of mind while and remain at the place of prayer. And may we receive the grace to remain at the place of prayer. Yes, so with the grace, it becomes the engine that keeps us on to continue in the travel because, I, uh, yes, if the Lord does not answer, then it's not in, 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 in the blueprints of your, of, your of your life. But just keep going, and one day, there will be a visitation. So remain in the closet. Remain at the place of prayer. Continue to shout hallelujah and hosanna. Continue to give him the dance of David. Continue to lift up holy hands, worshiping day and night. And there will be a total turnaround. And I pray that the Lord in the heavens will give us a visitation. Amen. Even tonight, as we digest the rudiments of this message, in the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. amen.